Cool. Well, thank you very much, everyone, for coming today. Uh, my name is Paul Stevens, and I work at Catalyst IT, and I'm the general manager of Open Knowledge. And today, I'm just going to talk a little bit about what is open knowledge. Well, Catalyst IT, this open knowledge is knowledge that one is free to use, reuse, redistribute without legal, social, or technological restriction. Uh, basically, we see it as a, a very important way of meeting the, the educational goals that Martin was talking about in his keynote of how do we improve education and how do we make sure that uh, your organisations are able to do that freely and you're able to control uh, the, the way that you deliver that student experience. And we also see that key to that um, Open source underpins the ability to be able to deliver open knowledge. We've got all these other open movements, open education, open government, open data, and we really see open knowledge at the centre of a lot of those movements. And so we've created a group of Catalyst that's essentially about delivering, delivering that. And we believe that by bringing that all, those things together, bringing the right open source projects together, we can help deliver open modern learning environments better and give a lot better student experiences and a lot better experiences for teachers by giving that seamless integration and that beautiful experience to uh, students. And I'm going to hand over to Christina now to talk about, and she heads up the Mahara project and talk about some real examples and what we are doing. And we're going to invest in Mahara quite significantly this year, and Moodle integration is key to that. Christina. Thank you, Paul. Um, as you can see here from, from the puzzle slide, we've, we've put some logos up there that you might have already heard about. But of course, there are many pieces still empty. And that is just to indicate that you will have other systems that are part of your learning environment that you may uh, want to make uh, or want to have part of it in there. And our pre-session survey showed that a lot of you already are integrate with other systems and so they would be filling those puzzle pieces because everything just together brings that big picture of a learning environment. There is no single application these days in my opinion that can deliver everything that you'd like to do. A lot of times we hear, well, can Mahara or Moodle do this and can do this and this? And then we say, well, for that you have a wiki available or you can connect to a content repository and you can do all these things. Because if we try to put all of that in one single application, there'd be a lot of development effort needed to spend to get up to that level that the other application already has. And then kind of staying on par with that would, quite be, difficult, would be quite difficult. And that's why the integrations become so much more important these days with API, through APIs and web services in order to deliver all the things that you and your students want and also your staff without kind of compromising lots of um, the applications that we already have and spent much time on development work that had already been conducted. And especially in the open source space, we have all these wonderful applications available that we can integrate with Moodle and other systems that you already use. So why not utilize that? And so the first idea that I'd like to talk about is um, Mahara. It's an ePortfolio system. And I'd be happy to talk with you about it a little bit more. But today I'd very much focus on the integration to Moodle and show you a couple of those possibilities. Um, because we do want to make it very easy for people to go from one system into the other without even necessarily seeing that they are leaving the learning management system. Because for the student and for the teacher, it doesn't matter what the application is called. They just know I want to learn, or I need to learn, I need to teach. But they should not see all those breaks between the applications that you made available to them. And so the, the one idea that we have is kind of connect Moodle to Mahara, and ideally from Moodle into Mahara so that content goes over or that authentication is being done, but also then the other way around so that we can send things from Mahara directly into Moodle. And that can be a permanent record, that can be a grade, anything. It's really 
up to your imagination. And oftentimes this can be done via web services. That's kind of one of the holy grails these days, I find, um, because that's the answer for everything, because we can integrate systems using that in order to make seamless connections. And so the idea that I'd like to show you today is using LTI, which is a subset of web services, for assignment submission for using a portfolio in a Moodle course, and therefore then send the grade into Moodle. Because oftentimes what we know from our community is that they like to see the grade in the Moodle gradebook instead of keeping a gradebook on the portfolio side and one on the Moodle side and students then needing to calculate the averages and all that. No, it needs to stay all in one place. So how can we do that? By sending the grade back. And LTI allows us to do that. Not all the options, but we are kind of getting there in phase two and phase three of the project. So right now what I'm going to show you is two things, namely the authentication from Moodle into Mahara so that you have an account created automatically and then can also create a portfolio if you already have a portfolio, then um, make, uh, set it up so that you can have it graded in Moodle by a teacher. And for that we go into the live demo, which should hopefully work. Sorry about that. Okay, here I have my teacher and in this case I already prepared an activity earlier on but to just briefly show you the steps, I'm not going to go through each of them individually because we don't have um, enough time for that today um, but I'd be happy to show that to you um, some other time. But if you set up an activity to Mahara, you would at the moment use the external tool that you can also use to connect to other systems for quizzes or repositories. And there you would choose the Mahara web services um, that you would have set up previously in the LMS. And the teacher does not need to know more than that. They would only choose the tool. They don't need to worry about consumer secret, shared key and all that it is just there for them. And then I, I can also decide whether I actually want to use that external tool activity just for authentication purposes, or if I do want to use it as an activity so that a grade is sent back. In this case, I do want to use it for both authentication and sending a grade back, so that's why this is ticked. Now if I go back to my home page, now that the activity is set up, as a teacher, I first need to configure it. And um, these are some steps that we kind of need to go through due to the way LTI is built. Um, because it is it is based on standards, we need, just need to make sure that certain kind of handshakes are made between Moodle and Mahara. And therefore, this is a workflow that is uh, currently available. Ignore all those blue messages on top. Blue is good, red would be pretty bad because that'd be an error message. We are currently still in the testing phase um, for our upcoming release and that's why we still um, display all those messages on screen to enable our testers um, very quick access to it and then send that to the developers. Kind of following on to what Evan had talked about in his presentation earlier on let's talk bugs of how to make it easy for both sides of the team to get to know what you're actually looking at. And so in Mahara, um, we now have the possibility to say, well, when a student submits an assignment, I as a teacher would like to get a notification about it so that I can go into and grade it. I can keep the portfolio locked after it has been graded so that they can never ever change that portfolio and the evidence that is in the portfolio. Um, and I can also say that this archive is, or that after the grading, an archive is being made. That is one of the big new features that is not currently not available via the Mnet connection. There is already a Mahara assignment submission plugin available in Moodle, um, but that doesn't have the archiving. And a lot of you, of course, need to keep assessed material for many, many years. So this is now one very good new feature in there. Um, if I'm happy with all these settings, I can save them. And now I can become a student Usually I'm very split brain. I have two personalities in one presentation. Once the teacher and now I'm Paula the student and can go to the same activity that the teacher had just set up. 
click on it, and then in this case, it opens up in a new window and I'm automatically authenticated. And I'm directly taken to the screen where I can submit my activity. So in this case, it is assumed that I already have a portfolio, but I can also, if I don't yet have one, is if this were my first login, can create a portfolio in Mahara through my regular uh, processes of putting evidence into portfolio pages in order to showcase my learning and to demonstrate that I have achieved certain competencies or skills. Now I see all the portfolios that I can submit to this activity because we are not creating portfolios based on courses in Mahara, but you have an entire space available where you can create any sort of portfolio. And so I get them all presented here. And in this case, I want to submit my Moodle Mood Australia uh, portfolio that I started yesterday with reflections on the day and submit that to the activity. That portfolio automatically gets locked so that the teacher knows what I've submitted is what I had submitted at that time, namely now at 1.42. It shows 3.42 because the website is actually in New Zealand. And now when I go back to my activity as a teacher, again, I just click the link in Moodle. And that's the nice thing about the integration. Teachers do not necessarily need to navigate in Mahara, find a group, find where are the students. But in this case, with the new LTI integration, they kind of see a simple gradebook view just for these activities. And it needs to be in Mahara because of the way LTI works. And so I can see the name, the portfolio title, when it was submitted, and can now create that portfolio. So that means I'm taken to the portfolio itself. I can look at the evidence. I can comment on individual pieces of evidence. I can comment on the page itself if I want to give summative feedback and then I can provide a grade. Due to the way LTI works, you can only give a letter grade. So that's the only thing that LTI can send back to Moodle. Um, together with a client in New Zealand, we are looking into actually integrating the new way of doing the Mahara assignment submission via the regular Moodle activity, uh, the assignment activity, so that you can also use regular uh, rubrics and uh, workflows there. But for the time being, that is in here. And if I'm going back in as my student, and the entry point for these activities is always the activity itself, it's because we do need that handshake between Moodle and Mahara, so that um, Mahara actually knows which portfolio to display. And now, when I go to that activity, I can see my grade directly in Mahara, but it is also put into the Moodle gradebook. So this is a very easy, seamless uh, connection between Moodle and Mahara so that students don't have to worry, well, where do I need to go? Um, how do I get to my portfolio? Where can I get it from? What do I do when I need to submit it? But it is right there the first time they log in. Instead of going to the dashboard, they go to the screen that they need to go to. And um, that, I think, is the important part for integrations that we make it easy for students and for teachers. Um, one thing I'd like to mention is, we, um, similar to a lot of features that go into Moodle Core, um, it is always good to have some sponsors and people who can actually pay for it and make these big features in particular happen. And in this case, we had a consortium of universities contributing to that, um, to a good chunk of the development cost, and that was in particular ANU, um, the University of Canberra, um, Australian Catholic University, then we also had Monash College and Kwantlen Polytechnic University in Canada. So I'd very much like to acknowledge um, all our funding partners um, to make it possible so that we as entire community can have now this feature available. Now, that was just one idea. We have a second idea that we'd kind of like to bring up a little bit, um, which I think has not really been looked at so much for integration points, because we all know 
authentication integration, integration with resource providers um, like Equella and others kind of at Fresco where we can just pull documents into a learning management system. But what about your library system? Since Catalyst is open source, we of course work with a library management system that is also open source. And incidentally, the development started in New Zealand in 1999 to circumvent the Y2K bug, and it is called Koha. And what, Koha, what you can do by integrating a library management system, let's just think about it. What are some possibilities? You could provide reading lists directly in your course so that students don't have to go to the library catalog, find the books there, and then check them out. You could just display your entire reading list in the course. Students click on the title, can reserve the book, or know where the location is in their library management system. They could also read reviews, or if they review a book in the library catalog, they could push that review automatically into the portfolio, which can then be put into a page that you assess through the learning management system. You can immediately display the status of books, whether they are um, still available for lending or not. Or you can also just have reserved shelves and an easy link to the subject librarians and things like that. So very tight integration between all the systems that the students would need to access. And you can also see, hopefully, that it's not always a one-to-one -one connection, so LMS to library, LMS to portfolio, but kind of the library can connect to the ePortfolio and then connect to the learning management system or the other way around, or maybe a fourth system is in there. So we can get quite complicated learning, and, um, learning environments these days. And that's why I kind of really like this picture here. It looks, looks a bit on the crazy side, but for me, it really is the, the windows in this um, building wall represent the individual applications to me. And then you have other smaller applications sitting in between them, and they connect in different ways. Sometimes you have a very broad, established connection, and at other times you have a very thin connection maybe only tangentially or they don't kind of connect at all, but then they connect in other pieces again and you kind of get the benefit through a third element. And really let's think about our ecosystems not just as I'm a Moodle user, I'm a Mahara user, I'm in the library, I'm working with content delivery systems, I'm working with the content management system, and then we have our infrastructure guys, but really look at it as a holistic system that everybody works together to deliver a good um, learning experience for the students and also a place that you as staff members and your colleagues, the learning designers, instructional designers, technologists, and also system administrators like to use because it is a system that is easy to use for everybody. And that's kind of where we all as community um, can work together and then our friendly developers can develop all those things together with our designers that make things pretty and the learning um, designers also who realize how we can make it in an easy to digest way for the students, bring the usability experts in there and then have the trainers and everybody working together to make this modern learning environment happen and ideally also make it an open one. Thank you. Does anyone have any questions? <laughs> Come on up, Bob. You mentioned the archiving feature, which is very cool. Mm -hmm. How does that work in terms of, as an administrator, how would I bulk bring archives down? Um, the archive is available on the site administration side um, part of it. So right now I'm only logged in as a teacher, so I don't see it. Uh, sorry, I just need to log out. And um, there, the archiving is done automatically. So if you, for example, grade 
10, 20 students in a very short amount of time and they have very huge portfolios, the server could easily be overloaded at times potentially. And so the archiving is actually done on a cron job basis so that the archiving happens when there are resources available on the server. And um, the students don't get to work on their portfolio until the archiving is finished. So very quickly, just to show you what the archive looks like. Um, is that as a site administrator, you can go into the archived submissions and then see all the submitted portfolios there by name and um, where they have been submitted to. So this is the Moodle site. Um, you also see the leap to a file and can download it directly from here in order to then put it back into Mahara. Or you can just scrape it from the server at the end of an academic term and put it on storage disk, on tape, or wherever you need to store your things. And you can also download a CSV file so that you know after a year which file goes with whom. Oh, um, Christine, we had a question over there, sorry. Um, in uh, Mahara, in the, the section that you were marking, uh, you said that it was only uh, numerical marks that could be put mm -hmm. in there. Um, we, use Mahara, we use Mahara quite extensively, yeah. um, and um, we have scales, so mm -hmm. it's incomplete or complete. Yeah. Um, would that be something that you could... That would be phase two. Um, currently, unfortunately, LTI only allows us to send over a number grade. There's nothing that we can do on the standard. And so what we wanted to do with phase one for this project, which you all will be able to see at the end of October when we release Mahara 18.10, is that you have that available. But that really is just the first phase. Um, together with Waitemata District Health Board in New Zealand, we are working on actually creating a Moodle plugin again um, so that you can use the regular assignment functionality and therefore can then use more of the built-in Moodle features. And that would allow you to do the pass-fail, use the rubrics, use marking workflows and all of those things that you're used to. And also kind of the things that you're used to from the current Mahara Assignment Submission plugin. Um, it's only that our initial um, directive for the LTI integration was it also needs to work with other learning management systems and not just Moodle so that the wider community can benefit from it. But this is definitely something um, that we are actively working on. Yeah. Uh, Christine, you had a question. Um, a couple of questions, actually. Uh, can you maybe please uh, use the microphone because there are quite a few people. Ah, there we go. It will be at the end of October. Currently, we are in testing. So if your developer would like to pull that from our code repository that is the testing site, then they are very welcome to do that. Okay, I'll do that. And the other thing I want to ask you is with the um, Mahara, like the Moodle Mahara assignment, mm -hmm. um, when you tick that you want to lock the, the page, does that um, stop the student from deleting it also? Yes. It does. So it would stay there? Yes. For every day? Mm hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Are there any other questions? <coughs> um, one more. All right. Well, thank you very much, Christina and Paul. Thank you.